Okay, so welcome. This is our reasoning techniques research presentation. My name is Hannah Taylor. I'm Laura Heffernan. Jennifer Bradley. Natalie Kenyon. The um, topic we're discussing today is it is ethically acceptable for companies to avoid or minimise the payment of their taxes. Uh, we research and break down the uh, following uh, definitions. Um, tax. Direct tax is one that is um, <coughs> taken directly from the individual. A direct tax is paid directly to the government um, by the person on whom it is imposed. Examples would include income tax, corporate tax and inheritance tax. Indirect tax are collected by the merchants and taken from the consumer, i.e. One, one paid by one person but then passed on to another, such as sales tax and VAT. <coughs> I looked at tax planning. What is tax planning? Tax planning is the preparation of paying tax completely, correctly and economically. It is a way of escaping the tax man or, less, or lessening the payment of tax by legal means. Tax planning has to be done before or during a business opens. Uh, for example, putting money into offshore accounts, putting your money into an ISA so you've minimised your tax at the very least or you're just not paying it at all. Um, planning is not the same as evasion. Um, I looked into the difference between avoidance and evasion. In the title it said avoidance. This is just using the law to minimise and it's perfectly legal to do. Whereas evasion is fraud, it's legal yeah. and it's illegal and it's um, not paying what you're meant to, what you owe. And ethical um, definition is, is something morally right or not. So. As Jade said, the evasion, um, that's unethical because examples of that would be hiding cash under your bed or cash in hand. Um, and then avoidance is, is ethical, it's legal, um, and that's just things like putting money into an ISA. Uh, our research showed us uh, that a lot of, lot of companies are actually avoiding tax, but we decided to research into Virgin, Starbucks and some of you might be aware that the gas companies are actually, some of the gas companies are avoiding tax. While we did our research, um, we saw that John Cordwell, um, the former Phones for You man, um, owner, is the highest taxpayer in the UK. Okay, so um, starting with Virgin, as we all know, Richard Branson is the big owner of Virgin. Um, he was born in the UK and was in the UK when he started up his, his Virgin businesses. Um, so a couple of quotes. Um, his Virgin companies have frequently referenced their British origins in brand, branding campaigns and Virgin Media capitalised on last year's surge in the national pride during the Jubilee and London Olympics by incorporating the flag into his logo. I'm sure you're all aware he has his own island as well, um, Necker Island, which he currently lives on. Um, any of his businesses that are registered on his island um, he doesn't pay income tax back into the country. So obviously he's using our um, flag to help promote and advertise his um, Virgin brands, yet not bringing any money back into the country, um, which is legal, again, but believed to be unethical. Um, he has his own bank, so again, he knows more what he's doing is wrong or, and um, knows about our... Um, country at the moment in the recession, so he understands that a bit better, so maybe he should be bringing more money in. Um, another thing to add, I don't know if you've seen on the news in the past couple of days, Prince Charles um, and his um, Duchy of Cornwall, he's actually, he doesn't have to bring in any money back into the country because of heritage and the royal family, <coughs> yet he chooses to, so that's making him look opposite to Richard Branson, putting him in a good life. Um, so Starbucks. Uh, Starbucks was founded in 1971 and opened their first coffee shop in Seattle. Starbucks is the second largest global retail um, restaurant chain behind McDonald's um, and is the largest coffee house in the world, having over 20,000 um, stores in 62 countries. The company has made use of perfectly legal tax avoidance schemes techniques to report no profits and so, and so escaping paying the UK tax. Saying this, in October 2012, Starbucks faced criticism after an investigation found that the company paid just 8.6 million in UK taxes over the past 14 years, despite generating over 3 billion in sales. The Seattle firm has only reported taxable profits 
once in 15 years in the UK. And gas companies, I'm sure most people know that in the winter months companies, gas and electric, they raise their prices just because they can, because people have to put their heaters on. Um, in the Observer, um, we found that 28% of pensioners said that uh, the main concern for the winter months is that they uh, need to heat their home. This is could be viewed as immoral because the gas companies are saving their money on not paying good enough tax, yet they're ra raising the prices to create more profit. Okay, so I did some research into John Cordwell, who we, who we all know is the former owner of Phones for You and the leader of the charity Cordwell Children. Um, John Cordwell is the UK's highest taxpayer and has been for a long time. He also puts a lot of money into his charity, which he did sell phones for you in 2006, so he could concentrate on his charity, which he puts a lot of the taxpayer money in towards his charity. We have got an article here, which anyone's welcome to go and look, which goes on. John Cordwell does an interview with the BBC on about how he pays his taxes and has done for a long time. We did also discover a few days ago, and we did some more research on John Cordwell, that he was no, he was accused of not paying VAT on certain things, but he was never prosecuted from it, so we can't actually prove whether that's right or wrong. But um, that also brings it back to Prince Charles. He's paying tax into the country, he's helping out with the recession, helping us come out of it, where a lot of large companies who are also English aren't doing this, and this is mainly why we are in a recession now. So then um, we have to look at other companies to take examples. Um, as a group, we came to a bit of a debate, um, choosing between is something ethical or unethical. Uh, me and Laura looked at the ethical side of the debate. So um, it is legal, um, due to the law as it is, it is legal to avoid paying tax, as it is okay for you and me to take our money and put it into an ISA account. So how can this be unethical? Also from the legal avoidance of taxes, charities can benefit. As said, Cordell Children, John Cordell's company, um, charity benefited from it. Um, Amazon, Google, Starbucks, all contribute towards charities also. Also, businesses grow from the profit. Uh, for example, Starbucks, they haven't paid tax since they were open and now they've recently started paying. I think the last payment was five million and they're thinking about paying another five million. And on the unethical side, um, for obvious reasons we've all discussed, it's, um, it is illegal <coughs> and not giving anything back. Going back to the version example, which if Ransom started out in the UK, um, but not bringing an awful lot back into the country where he's originated from. We also discussed how it's unfair and the public suffers. For example, we pay our taxes, it automatically comes out of our bank. After we earn a certain amount of money, we pay a certain amount of taxes back to the country. Whereas, how is it fair that we, who are not earning as much, for example, Richard Branson or the gas companies, why are we paying it and they aren't paying it? It's also bad for business. If you know a business isn't paying tax, you don't want to go with them. You want to go with someone who's doing it fair, ethically, paying tax, so they're going to eventually lose business, whereas people who are paying taxes are going to gain it. As you can see from the statistics on the board, McDonald's is one of the highest companies who don't pay taxes back into the United Kingdom. And it goes all the way from McDonald's, Amazon, Google, all the way to Apple. In conclusion, we looked at the beginning, it is ethically acceptable for companies to avoid or minimise the payments of taxes. After researching and discussing this, we decided that it is ethically acceptable for companies to avoid their taxes, but it's unethical for companies to minimise their taxes. Thank you for listening, and are there any questions? Are there any questions? Ask away. Well, lots of the references. <laughs> Could you just reiterate your conclusion again? again please? Conclusion, it is, we decided, the question originally was it is ethically acceptable for companies to avoid and minimise their taxes. It is ethically acceptable, acceptable for them to avoid it, but it's very unethical for them to minimise them because avoiding is legal, minimising is illegal. How would it be illegal to avoid it? Avoiding is, for example, putting your money into an ISA. Is so that what when you've got no, for example, you can put into an ISA five thousand six hundred and fifty-four pounds. That's the maximum That's you can put into the year. <laughs> That's why there's a limit to actually doing it, avoiding it. 
that's why companies can go about putting it in offshore accounts and everything because it is perfectly legal for them to do that. Whereas if you worked as a waitress or something and you get cash in hand and you're hiding that under your bed, mm -hmm. that's cashed mm -hmm. as like you're minimising your tax and you're not paying it. That's like completely not illegal. Fair. But what I mean yeah, there is, how did Starbucks get in like dodgy for they can do it, for example, because they're an American company, they can go through their American accounts. For example, Amazon go through Sweden and put all their accounts through that. Mm -hmm. So they're not not—they're technically not an English company, but they work. They do a lot of business in England, so they're avoiding paying taxes by saying they're a okay. Swedish company. And Boots um, set their headquarters in Switzerland, so that's yeah. okay. Did you not find like any research on about Richard Branson, you know, like people protesting about him using the, the flag? Or anything like, that. like why is he still doing it then getting away with we it? did find a lot on it but then he put it in because he was still an englishman that he could still do it whereas we also found research that british airways were going to think about taking their british flag off and then decided not to but he can still put his british flag on because he's still an englishman at the end of the day and he's got every right to put that on where there, were, there was a lot of interesting information on it but because he's english he can still do it it's not your own definition